Do you know about the story of Emanuela Orlandi, the 15-year-old Italian girl who disappeared in 1983? If you've only now heard the name or maybe learned about the girl's mysterious disappearance from the Netflix docuseries Vatican Girl, you'd be surprised to learn that despite the years spent investigating the case, the girl's never been found and no one really knows what's happened to her. For now, the case remains a mystery and this video gives insights into everything you should know about the case. The Life of Emanuela Orlandi The girl whose life and disappearance were the focus of the 2022 Netflix docuseries Vatican Girl was the second youngest of five siblings. She was born and raised in a devout Catholic family living in Vatican City, and her father worked in Pope John Paul II's household. While she lived in a country with a sparse population, Emanuela's family had been serving the Pope's household for generations. Her small family consisted of her parents, Maria and Ercole Orlandi, her brother, Pietro Orlandi, and her sisters, Frederica, Natalina, and Cristina. It's reported that Emanuela loved playing the piano and flute, and she also sang in the church choir. Disappearance On the day of her disappearance, Emanuela was on her way home from the music school outside of the Vatican. She then called home and told her sister that a man had approached her right outside her school. According to Frederica, Emanuela informed her that a man driving a green BMW had stopped her and offered her a job working for the brand Avon selling cosmetics. This troubled her, and she called her sister back to ask for her opinion and guidance. Her sister, Frederica, asked her to speak with their parents about the proposition. At the time, Cristina was to meet up with Emanuela alongside Cristina's friends, but Emanuela didn't show up. After waiting for Emanuela for some time, Cristina headed home since her sister hadn't shown up. She hoped she'd find Emanuela at home, but was shocked to learn that they'd not seen or spoken to Emanuela since she last spoke with Cristina and Frederica. Friends later revealed that when Emanuela got to class, she was rather distracted and even requested to leave the class early. She left at about 6.50 p.m. Her friends noted that they saw her getting on a bus home and that she was chatting with another passenger, a red-haired female. That was the last time they heard from her or saw her. As the hours flew by with no word or sighting of Emanuela, the family grew increasingly anxious, and they started looking for her out on the streets from 9.30 p.m. They searched for most of the night, and that search has been going on for close to 40 years now. What happened? Emanuela Orlandi vanished on June 22, 1983 at the age of 15, as she made her way home to Rome after her flute lessons. On the day of her disappearance, Emanuela had taken the bus, as she always did when attending her classes at Santa Polinari Basilica. The basilica was known for its spectacular gardens that doubled as the kids' playground. It's also said that the Pope would stop at the gardens where he frequently spoke with the youngsters who were having fun on the lawns. Initial Leads and Searches The first few days after her disappearance, the family kept searching and involved the cops, Additionally, they published Emanuela's photo in the newspaper alongside their contact information. They received numerous calls, but two of the phone calls stood out. The first call was from a guy named Pierre Luigi, who claimed that he'd seen a girl called Barbara selling Avon products. This stood out because the information matched up with what Emanuela had told Frederica on the phone outside her music school. Days later, a man called Mario called the Orlandi household with claims of seeing a girl called Barbarella also selling cosmetics by Avon. They reported that, according to Mario, the girl regretted missing the opportunity to perform at an upcoming school concert. This information was also accurate according to the family, especially since they were the only ones, besides Emanuela, who were privy to the information. The family forwarded the information to the Secret Service agents who installed recording devices in the home, hoping to gather more information. Since none of this information led to Emanuela, the family kept searching and putting up posters of their girl all over the Vatican. This caught the attention of the church. The Pope addressed the missing girl case soon after. Subsequently, the family received another call from a person with a foreign accent, who they named the American, claiming to have abducted Emanuela and that he'd kill her. This person demanded the release of a Turkish far-right terrorist from an ultra-nationalist group, Mehmet Ali Agka. The terrorist was charged with attempting to assassinate the Pope in 1981. Although the American claimed that Ali Agka was sent by the KGB rather than the Grey Wolves, 
This line of questioning proved futile while leading investigators down the rabbit hole as they came across the connection between the Vatican Church and the many significant financial fraud cases across Rome. Organized crime was also considered a potential lead. Unfortunately, even approaching the case from this angle didn't yield any concrete answers. During the investigations, the Vatican even pried open two tombs believed to belong to two German princesses from the 19th century. But after the remains were exhumed at the cemetery of Pontifical Teutonic College, the tips received by Emanuela's family turned out to be a hoax since the tombs were empty. And so, in a new twist of events, this tip led to an all-new mystery as the investigators wondered about the whereabouts of the German princesses. These investigations further led to two ossuaries with unidentified human bones, and neither of these nor the bones belonged to Orlandi. In 2018, Emanuela's family lawyer, Laura Scro, revealed that they'd received an envelope containing an angel statue at the Teutonic Cemetery in the Vatican. The envelope also had a letter with the words, if you want to find Emanuela, search where the angel looks. Unfortunately, this lead also turned cold. More than three decades later, and though the case would be deemed cold, her memories have been kept alive by her brother, Pietro. Recent Developments most recently, Alessandro Didi, who served as Vatican's justice promoter, reopened the case. This move was sparked after Emanuela's older brother, Pietro Orlandi, made several requests to the Justice Department. As a result, the case was officially reopened, and all the files, reports, documents, testimonies, and information relating to the case were re-examined. But it wasn't just Emanuela's brother being consistent. The other thing that sparked new interest in the case is the recently released Netflix documentary, Vatican Girl. This documentary explores the many theories around the disappearance of Emanuela Orlandi. As new information about the case comes to light, it's believed that the case wasn't just reopened because of Pietro's persistence or the Netflix documentary. Another big reason for reopening the case could be because of the threat of an expose by Georg Ganswein the late ex-Pope Benedict's close confidant and personal secretary. Georg promised to address the Emanuela Orlandi mystery in a tell-all book. New Theories Focus on a new girl, Mirella. It's been noted that the recent investigations into Emanuela's disappearance will focus on the case of another girl, Mirella Gregori, who also disappeared in Rome a few weeks before Emanuela disappeared. Mirella was also 15 years old when she disappeared, after informing her mother that she'd gone out on a date. With the reopening of the cases, it's believed that there is a potential connection between the two girls' disappearances. Kidnapped by someone close to the Pope One of the theories floated around about Emanuela's disappearance is that Emanuela could have been molested by an unnamed individual who was someone close to Pope John Paul II. Her disappearance is believed to be connected to the alleged sex ring that the Vatican police officers ran alongside the criminal underworld running Rome. Trip to London There's also a theory revealed in the documentary that Emanuela was taken to London and that she lived there in a youth hostel for years. It's believed that while in London, Emanuela lived at a youth hostel that a member of the Catholic congregation ran. Additionally, it's believed that the Vatican was catering for all of Emanuela's expenses. This theory further alludes that she died in London, after which her body was transferred back to Rome and then buried in the Vatican. While following this lead, two tombs were reopened and exhumed in the Vatican, but there weren't any human remains found in the tomb. Unfortunately, no one still knows exactly what happened to Emanuela, and the conspiracies keep flying. And as the most significant secrets about the disappearance continue piling up, and persons of interest continue evading questions by the press while gatekeeping information crucial to the case, Emanuela's family is still looking for answers. To date, the story of Emanuela feels like a case with endless winding turns and no end in sight, even as the questions keep cropping up and the case gets stranger. So, what do you guys think? Share in the comments! Thanks for watching.